Good morning. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today. It is walking with wisdom, except it's raining. So I am having wisdom to not get out in that weather right now. And just to be on here for a couple minutes to encourage you. And one of the things that has really been on my heart to talk to you about today is fear and the power of fear. Okay? It is. Hey, Terry. Good morning. It is good to have healthy fear. But fear, when it keeps you in a chronic stress state and in a false reality, is not healthy. It is actually horrific physically, emotionally, mentally. And so we're going to look at how to address fear. Good morning, Sheila. And so as you join on, you be super hateful and encouraged that the things that you have been wrestling with are absolutely going to be addressed. We have been really looking at some good topics this week. Hey, Christina. And we've looked at trauma, we've looked at fear, we've looked at rejection, we've looked at paranoia. Good, Terry. And so I really just want to encourage you and strengthen you as we look at the self-image. What is a self-image? It's what you think about yourself. It's what you think about yourself. But as I talk about it in the new book, and I'm praying it's out in April, and oh my goodness, this book is stretching me beyond all measure. And I feel like I'm living it out minute by minute, moment by moment. And I'm hyper attentive, aware of just all of my emotions, all my thoughts. And there's so many days that I feel like I'm on a roller coaster ride and I'm like, oh my goodness, God, do I have to feel every experience of this book that I've already lived? Do I have to keep reliving it? And now, again, over and over because I'm writing it. And it is definitely a stretch. Thank you, Brandy. Thank you. Hey, Mache. Hey, Janice. So glad to have y'all on. Hey, Jane. Thanks for joining in on the UK. And also, just to let you know, my books are on Amazon in the UK. I do get a few people from the UK that order my books on Amazon. So y'all get on Amazon. Now, let's look at fear. Hey, Suzanne Williams. Hey, Amber. And so fear, of course, is a false reality that is, a, is looking the false evidence that is appearing real, right? That's an acronym. And we have to look at fear, which can be healthy, and fear that can be unhealthy. So when is it healthy? It is healthy when there is a lion in front of you. When there is a lion in front of you, the way that God has fearfully and wonderfully made us is to have that stress response signaling from the hypothalamus most of the times, especially when it comes to vision and hearing, your hypothalamus is going to kick into your pituitary to start releasing that hormone that will go to your adrenals and will cause your adrenals to start releasing glucocorticoids, cortisol, which is one which instigates the stress response. When it comes to smell and touch, because of the neuron efficacy that is attached specifically to smell and to touch, there is a direct line to your amygdala, which you have one on each side, and that amygdala in your brain, and it actually means almond in Greek, that amygdala is the place of fear conditioning or reward reinforcement. And so the way to look at your amygdala is just intense emotions, intense emotions. And so you're never going to be in a middle ground on your amygdala. It is either at one end or the other. It is extreme. It is extreme. It is never <clears throat> just balanced when it comes to your amygdala. It is the place, again, of either fear conditioning or the other extreme of reward reinforcement and extreme excitement. And so when we look at brainwashing, literally brainwashing 
from all the different psychological experiments that have been done in the 70s, all in the past, it's always going after the amygdala because if you're going to be brainwashed, the amygdala is the place of fear conditioning. And one of the things when you're experiencing fear, um, most of the time, it is operative in that amygdala part of your brain. And so one of the things that I noticed, and when, like I said, with vision and hearing, it's going to go from the hypothalamus, and you're going to have the hypothalamus hit the pituitary, hit the amygdala. You're going to have all kinds of instigations operating with a stress response. Whereas with smell and with touch, it's going to bypass the hypothalamus, which is like a blind control center, like Star Trek, being in the cockpit with Star Trek. And it's going to start sending out control signaling all through your brain. So it bypasses your hypothalamus when it comes to fear, when you smell or when you have touches. And why is this? Why is it so important? So let's look at two sides. When it comes to visual and auditory and it goes to the hypothalamus, you have to understand with visual and auditory, it is filtering things through past memories within your brain and in your body where memories are stored and those past memories are filtering what you're perceiving, what you're hearing, what you're seeing, and it gives you a filtered response based on the moment. And so if you already have a low self image and you see and you hear something then immediately you're going to pick up on memories that are going to filter your self-image in a negative light, and you're going to be on the low, on the roller coaster. You have to understand, and I really break it down in chapter four. Chapter four is just phenomenal. All the chapters are phenomenal in the book, but chapter four gets into the construct of the language of fruit, and it really unpacks the language of fruit and how the mind and the body connect in the spirit realm and they communicate in the language of fruit. And so when it comes to your self image, it is the core of yourself. It is who you truly believe you are. But that core of who you believe you are is filtered through memories. And so your memories influence what you think about yourself. And when you're in a bad mood, you're not going to be thinking a lot of great things about yourself. So when you're in the fear response, when you're in the fear response and it's visual and it's auditory, it's filtering those memories that are really causing the self image to see itself in a bad light. And that is an unhealthy fear. It is unhealthy. It is a false reality. It is false evidence that's appearing real. And you have to realize you're hypnotized. A lot of people really do not understand hypnosis. And in the Christian arena, they look at it as a taboo. A lot of things in the Christian arena, that, that's what I do not understand. What's so funny is that scientists that bring in God in science get persecuted, and they have been persecuted and blackballed ever since that I've gone back in history, since the 14th, 15th century, and I've actually written and taught on this in great detail, especially with mathematicians and scientists in the king's courts and academies that were blackballed. They were banished because they proved God existed, and the opposite is true. When Christian anointed ministers bring in science doing Romans 1, 20 to show the God of the invisible who shows himself through the visible, they get blackballed. They get looked at as crazy. And it is absolutely hypnosis. That's what it is. It is hypnosis. And so when people talk about hypnosis in the Christian arena, it's almost like put, your, put a cross up with your fingers, you know. But this is the thing. This is the thing is you do not understand what hypnosis is. If you think that, if, if that is your first reaction, when I say the word hypnosis and you're hearing it and you're seeing me, and if you, you've you already got memories that are filtering hypnosis and it's speaking to you 
and you're not open to wisdom. Hypnosis is the power of suggestion. It is the power of suggestion. And the best place that we have seen this instigated is in the Garden of Eden with Satan as the serpent that was the most conniving, most wise animal in the garden. And that serpent <clears throat> merely put a suggestion in the mind of Eve. And that suggestion took root. So she was seeing him. She was hearing him. And she gave in to his suggestion. She just listened to his suggestion. Hey, Matthew. Hold on one second. Let me just tell Matthew to call Rich. Hold on one second. Hold on. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Hey, can you call Rich? Yeah. Okay, because tell him I'm on Facebook Live, baby. So, when we look at Eve and she took the power of suggestion, that power of suggestion caused her to be hypnotized. Fear. As you look at your seeing, your ocular, your auditory, as we look at that, it is going to be an unhealthy fear that is filtered through unhealthy memories. But when it comes to smell and to touch, and you're immediately in that fear response because when you smell something, you get afraid, or when you have a touch somewhere on your person, on your arm, you get afraid, then that fear response is in a place that is being exposed where you were uh, trespassed against by the enemy in an ungodly manner, and you are just operative in that fear response that has been transgressed against your body. And that is a fear that is real, but it's in your past. A fear that is real, but it's in your past. And so if you're dealing with a stress response that comes from smell and that comes from touch, that fear is real, but it's not real today. It's not real today. And so what you have to look at in dealing with fear is you have to know what is real. You have to realize that your memories are filtering your self-image and that today, today, in this moment, there is not a lion in front of you. And so the enemy is lying, a lying lion. 1 Peter 5, 8, he is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and so whom he may consume. So right now, a lot of you are going to fear. And listen, I struggle with this. Don't think that I don't. And there's just certain times in my life and certain seasons and I notice at certain times of the year that it comes up and I realize that it comes up at every time that year is because in my past, Something happened during the year at that time that caused me to be hypersensitive and look at myself bad and filter my self-image through horrible memories that I would have to be on this roller coaster ride where I'd have lows and then I would come up in confronting my fear. And so how do you confront it? You first of all acknowledge it. You acknowledge that you're in the fear response. The only way that you can turn the stress response off is by switching to the frontal cortex, this frontal lobe, where you it's the executory level of functioning. It's your executory decisions. And you make a decision. I acknowledge this. I see that this I'm feeling fear. It feels real to me. And you acknowledge how you're thinking about yourself. Is what are the thoughts that you're thinking good or are they bad? And you acknowledge those thoughts and then you make a decision to think Philippians 4, 8, what is lovely, what is good, what is true, what is of a noble report and what is kind. That's what you do, saints of God. And you say, Robin, well, it's easier said than done. You do not get this. It is a skill. Practice makes perfect. It's not something that comes through osmosis. It is practice makes perfect. All behavior is learned. 
And so you learned how to be afraid, right? So guess what? You can learn how to be unafraid and get out of that hypnosis. So you keep practicing this skill that I'm talking about and you're going to see victory in little areas. And when you get victory in little areas, you're going to have victory in the bigger area. It takes the little things to get to the big thing. So you just keep pressing forward. I love you and I will see you tomorrow. God bless.